Hello, folks. Let's go ahead and take a look at SAP Data Services Workbench again, uh, 4.2 SP1. Today, we'll take a look at uh, creating data flows in the workbench. Uh, going forward, if, when you're using the workbench, you don't necessarily need to create a job or a workflow. You could directly go ahead and create a data flow. So let me go ahead and create one. I'm going to call it my demo. Next. Uh, I'm going to pull in some existing flat file formats that I have created earlier. I'm going to pull in them into my data flow as uh, source sources. And uh, I can uh, join them both by selecting them and uh, creating a query transform between them. Select them both, right click and say create query transform. Go into query. Uh, and then go to joints say detect joints uh basically the workbench editor is going to detect some joints based on the column names and data type i'm going to select only one of these and confirm them and that is uh, i think it was contract service agreement or something on those lines let me look for it uh, contract service agreement i'm going to say just take this one I do not want anything else. So yeah, it creates the join here. I'm gonna go back to your query and uh, to select a few columns from here. Should we go to the output schema? Select a few few columns from my source. Go into the next flat file or the transaction source and. Uh, Pull in a few of these. I'm going to use a template table as my target table. I'm going to select a data store called, uh, let's say, this one here. I have a schema that I've already created with this name A2 Sales, and I'm going to say my demo target. That's my table name. I'm going to join these two. There is something available uh, in Workbench 4.2 called Basic Cleanse. Uh, we could just add it in here between this query and the target table. If you remember in Designer, if I wanted to add something in between, I would have to uh, break this flow and then add the new uh, transform and then again join the uh, source and the target. Uh, in this case, actually, I could just drop it and drag it in the basic cleanse or a query transform or whatever I want. Just drag it in there and it'll automatically join it. Basic cleanse is basically something you use to uh, work mainly on var care fields. As an example, uh, let's say customer company name. Uh, it has all these options of uh, removing leading spaces, trailing spaces, uh, and whatever you're seeing here. You can replace null values with something else if you like. If you want, uh, you can do a search and replace. I know, for example, that is this company which has something uh, which has a part of its name as power. I want to replace it with powerful. Uh, what else? Uh, yeah, that's about uh, the basic lens. And then uh, we also have macros. Let's see. Uh, do I have uh, macros? Is, uh, I'll tell you what macros are. Let me look for these fields called flags. Output schema. I'm gonna put it right at the top here. Okay. I'm gonna actually go execute this. Let me execute this once so uh, we can then look take a quick look at the data. I'm gonna say save all. Execute. Okay, that is executed. It's got some warnings which I'm going to ignore. Now let's take a quick look at the data. View data. Yep, there. Uh, there was. See, the power got replaced with powerful. We have these flags. Uh, if I wanted to replace these values with a yes or no, so basically, if there is an X, I want it to say yes, and if not, just say no. Uh, in the world of the designer previously what we would do is 
go to the column and uh, say uh, right click here and uh, do edit mapping expression I would put a if then else right and uh, I would say if transaction flag equal to X then give me a yes if not give me a N yes or no or Y or N uh, and then basically I would have to repeat it for each and every column but here you do not have to do that going forward you have this beautiful feature called macros so let me go back here to flag and say apply expression macros manage uh, manage macros so I have already created one if then else original expression if it is X then give me yes if it's not an X uh, give me a no and uh, basically what you need to do is instead of writing any specific column name here you're just going to use this text that says original expression the word original underscore expression within curly brackets and uh, you can simply go ahead and apply these to multiple columns I'm just going to apply it to uh, flag one and then if you see See, it now says if then else flag one equal to X, give me a Y, yes, if not a no. I could apply it to multiple columns. Just right click on the column and say uh, my flag macro. See, each of them now have, uh, you know, uh, the macro or the formula applied. And uh, since it's a yes or no, let me go in here and uh, say edit data type and change this to five or so okay uh, so that's uh, with macros basically you don't have to redo the formula again and again this was a simple example but uh, look at something else let's say you had a customer key here so I have company name and then I'm gonna bring it in again here and say insert below so instead of company name if I wanted customer key basically I have to look up the dimension table and uh, get the key based on the name of the company this has to be a integer so uh, let me make it an integer I've already created a macro for it uh, it's basically the lookup macro manage expression macros go look at my uh, customer key lookup it's basically the same uh, lookup formula that you would uh, write previously uh, the only difference is you know I mean this is the dimension table and then you're saying return the customer key look up the customer name and instead of writing any specific column here here's the piece that's important you're gonna say original expression rest all is usual stuff I'm gonna say okay and uh, right click on customer key apply expression macro and say customer lookup the uh, macro was applied and if I take a look here it is uh, it replaced the original expression with contract customer company name so yes uh, that's the beauty of the macros if you're going to be using some uh, you know formula again and again don't have to keep doing it just create a macro and uh, apply it on as many columns as you like uh, here is one other thing uh, let me insert one more query here okay and uh, I'm just going to create a quick column here called transaction quantity copy transaction quantity paste okay that didn't work so I'm just going to create a new field called okay it's actually here I'm going to call it quantity times price so it's going to be quantity into price let me remove these two I don't want them okay previously if I had a uh, in the designer if I was changing any one of the fields in my source table or in one of the queries and 
or one of the transforms. And imagine I had 10 transforms here. If I'm changing something in the source, I would have to rely on any notes, or I would have to basically go into each and every query transform and find out what would be the effect of changing this column, where all has it been used. Now you have this feature called lineage. Uh, you go down here and uh, look at uh, quantity, where the quantity go, transaction quantity. I click on transaction quantity and see, it immediately tells me where all, where all this column has been used. Let me go back there, transaction quantity. Once I click on it, See, it tells me it's being used in this query, this query, over here. In fact, I remember using it in two places. Uh, why is that not showing up? Let's just check price. See, price is being used in two places. I mean, in two columns in this particular query and in the target table in two columns. So yeah, that's this feature called lineage. And it's again, one of the more, you know, one of the very beautiful features where you don't have to worry about what happens if I change one of my source columns. You can easily see it here toggle the lineage display. Let me show you one other thing. I'll go in and apply a quick where clause here. Uh, just some random where clause, let's say on the column price. I'm gonna say price not equal to zero. And so uh, and go back to output schema, I'm using price here and it's being used here. Let's see what happens if I were to go to one of the previous queries and rename the price column. I'm just gonna call it price underscore new. Let's see the lineage. Nothing seems to have broken. And basic cleanse, uh, the price underscore new got brought over the way it was. And uh, over here, the price column mapping says price underscore new and quantity time price also has the new column. The var clause also changed it from price to price underscore new. So you see uh, uh, nothing broke when we renamed one of the columns in the previous queries. Uh, it's transparent to the queries further down. And uh, so yeah, a very uh, another very great feature which helps you save some extra work. Uh, you know, you don't have to manually go fix the queries like how you would do in the designer. And yes, on file formats, uh, one quick word on that. Uh, previously in Designer, you could create only one at a time. Here, you can create multiple flat file formats. You say automatically import flat file formats, say next, add files. Um, in this example, I'm gonna select uh, two flat files, uh, just as an example, transaction one and uh, actually transactions two and contracts two, say open. Next, the screen here is very similar to the screen in uh, data services, uh, the designer where you would set various, uh, you know, various uh, options, property names and values that you wanted, but I'm just gonna say finish. And there it creates two flat file formats. So yes, that's another uh, new beautiful feature where you could create flat file formats from multiple files without having to do it again and again. So yes, that was a quick look at some of the uh, features in uh, Data Services Workbench 4.2 SP1. Uh, hope this was helpful and uh, thank you very much for watching folks.